if we could run um, current deep learning on a matryoshka brain around like our son, do you think it would be able to behave like a human or would it wake up? Would it be able to sort of find sentience or something? Or is there something? It would definitely not behave like a human because imagine that you, you would uh, uh, basically be spread out around the sun and interact yeah. with the sun and, uh, at cosmic time scales you would experience yourself as something that is very, very different, right? Even if you retain your capacity for sentience and making sense of reality and you just scale it up, you will be completely inhuman. And this human identity is... Sentience, I guess, is the important question. Yeah, why not? I, I suspect that sentience is the result of some kind of control problem that requires to understand your relationship to the environment. So if you need to optimize yourself and the way that in which you discover policies and apply them to actions, uh, uh, and this problem is learnable, and you can make observations about your own behavior and use that for learning, you will at some level form a model of the system interacting with its environment. And when the uh, contents of that model are driving the behavior of that system, including the self-report of that system, then the system will tell itself and possibly others that it's sentient. Right? And this is something that we, this is the reality that we observe in ourselves. It's, we observe uh, an agent that is interacting with its environment. We observe the best model of that reality that our brain can come up with. And we ask our mind, am I real? And that thing says, yes, it's the best approximation of reality that I found, right? So, yes, you are real. Okay. And, uh, of course, you're still completely virtual. This wouldn't change. For me, the more interesting question is not so much uh, what happens to the AI systems that we build. Uh, is this particular algorithm going to cut it? We don't know yet which algorithms are going to be general enough. But I suspect that sentience is a general property of an information processing system with sufficient complexity and time and resources for self-organizing itself. So um, I, I suspect that if you let a plant sit alone for long enough, um, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't become sentient. The difference between plants and animals is plants don't have a nervous system in the sense as we do. Mm -hmm. but So they have to compute by sending signals to adjacent cells. And uh, basically all cells in our body have the ability to send messages that can be encoded as different chemicals, so different message types, and to learn how to react to them with an evolutionary process. And uh, this evolutionary process can also affect temporary state changes in the current cells. So this current cell can learn how to react to certain messages in a given context according to the constraints that it has evolved, which means that uh, the cells in the plant can exchange messages in almost the same way as a brain can. The difference is that the message exchange is going to be much, much slower because it can only progress a few cells uh, per second. Mm -hmm. the chemical gradients in the, in the plant, which means for the most part, the, scent, uh, uh, the plant is going to be very, very slow. And uh, for the plant, we are going to be some kind of a blur. It also means that relative to us, the plant cannot tr uh, collect that much training data. It's going to be relatively young when it dies. And uh, the more interesting level of intelligence for a plant-based system is going to be more on the level of forests or ecosystems. 